Thank you for being with us this evening. And those who was here this morning, those who was watching this broadcast, you know that this morning we have a awesome service. The presence of the Lord was here. God was ministering to the brought the restoration some families. So we know that God who will serve, He is real God and He's doing a real things in the people's lives. Listen. Amen. So let's we open up in prayer before we're gonna start. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much. We thank you, Father, for who you are and for everything, what you're doing in each of our lives. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit, is here. And we thank you, for it, Father, for your presence. Continue to be released in this place. Continue to minister to your people, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask in you, Lord God, that you are use our men of God as your vessel, as your instrument, Lord God. To minister to your word. Lord, and we thank you, Lord God, that your word, Father, will not return void, but will manifest in your people's lives. Father, you said in your word, as we know the truth, the truth will set the people free. So, Father, we release the freedom of the Lord Jesus Christ in this place tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Whatever our needs are, God already knows his needs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, before we even come to God and Ask him our request. He already know. So, how many of us know that you know what you're going through? But see, something is required from us to ask. Because the scripture says, ask and should be given to you. Because when we ask the Lord for certain things, we are humbly submit to Him, right? So because you are submitting to Him, because the scripture says, submit to God, right? So we submit to Him. So when we come before Him and we do our petition, you already know your petition, but because you submit to Him, he have ears what to hear, and as he hear, that he will answer to you whatever the needs is. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the needs of your people will be met. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your people is submitted to you. We thank you, Lord God, that your people is obedient to you, to your voice. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your people, they not just the hear of the voice, but they will do us. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for the sweet, sweet presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. Father, we cancel every distraction in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the love of Christ continue to flow in this place. We thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, one of the things when we come into the Lord, the scripture says that we have to renew our mind. And our mind has to be renewed with the word of God. You know, when we come into the Lord, the one of the first steps we have to do to renew our minds, renew our behaviors. And it's coming through the understanding who God is and what he wants from us a lot of our a lot of things in our lives we pick up from our family whatever your parents maybe did you certain things you pick up that and some things you have to get rid of another thing
things is very important is when even a child, when the child is born, you don't have to teach the child to disobey. That is the nature of the child, to rebalance the sin nature. So when someone is the born of the Spirit of God and we're born, this is why we pray for the children, right? So when you pray for your child, when you pray for your family, you are born again, the child of God, if you're truly born of the Spirit. Now, the person has to renew the mind, because, see, you can be a child of God and the born of the Spirit, and even though maybe you're not all that perfect, but that root of rebellion still can be somewhere in your heart. That root of rebellion, your parents may be rebelling. Oh, who is that? Why? Who, who is telling me? And, you know, one of the signs of rebellion is not to submit to the authority. How many of us know? <laughs> like, um, I, I was listening to preaching um, uh, Benny Hinn. How many of you know Benny Hinn? And he was saying, he, because he's working with uh, thousands and millions of people and he sees people has been delivered and set free and he was saying, everybody was saying, oh, oh I want to serve God, I want to serve God. It's very easy to say, yeah, I want to serve God, but if you don't want to submit no man of God, Amen. pretty much you're walking on rebellion. The spirit of rebellion is in you. Oh, I hear God myself. Yes, and pastor and, and, and a lot of ministers of God, they teach you to hear God for yourself. But you know, something is the delegated authority. If you don't have a covering in your life, a pastor, you're in trouble. You are a lost sheep without the shepherd. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, he is. But you know what? He... Uh, set a de delegated authorities and when you're not able to submit to any man of God in reality you're not able to submit to God himself because you operate under the curse you operate still under the spirit of rebellion because you're not able to submit no man so we pray today that God will minister into your heart and you receive the revelation of the humble attitude and says, Lord, not my will, let your will be done in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, pastor is here and he will minister into us in Jesus name. Amen, amen, amen. Well, God bless you all. Welcome tonight to New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Hallelujah. You know, I want to just thank all of you for coming tonight. And, oh, my God, this morning was so powerful, so powerful. It was so powerful. I want you all to stand up with me for a little bit, okay? Yes. Father, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord God, that your word will go forth today without any hindrances of any force of any kind. Father, we bless your name, we glorify your name, and we give you honor, Lord God. There's, there's nothing, Lord God, that you, that, that you want for us that we do not. God, you want everything for us that we want for ourselves. You want to bless your children. You want to see after your children. You want the best for your children. And so, Father, we thank you, and we bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day 
This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Me. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. I want you to open up your hearts right now. And I want you to expect God to minister to you. Amen. Expect it right now. As we go through these songs we're going to go through. Amen. Purpose in your heart that you're going to yield to the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Majesty. Worship His Majesty Unto Jesus Be all glory, honor, and praise Majesty King of authority Float from His throne Unto His own his anthems ring, so exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King, majesty. King of authority, flow from his throne unto his own, his anthems reign. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus, magnify. Come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship His majesty. Jesus who died and now glorified, King of all kings. Jesus who died and now glorify, King of all kings. Jesus. Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. Oh, the glory of his presence. We Give you reverence, so arise from your rest and be blessed by our praise as we glory in your Now fills this place, oh, the glory of His presence. We, your temple, we give you reverence, so arise. From your rest and be blessed by our praise as we glory in your embrace as your presence now fills this place. So arise from your rest and be blessed 
by our praise as we glory in your embrace as your presence now fill this place the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Father, we worship you. We worship you. You are holy. You are holy, Lord. Glory. Glory. Glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You're the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you we lift our voice in praise to the Lamb upon the throne. Glory Glory, glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You're the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you we lift our voice in praise to the Lamb upon the throne. To the Lamb upon the throne. This is holy ground, Jesus. We're standing on holy ground, for the Lord is present. For the Lord is present, and where He is, is holy. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is present and where he is, is holy. And we are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. So let us praise Jesus. Us now we are standing in his 
His presence on holy ground. And we are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. So let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in His presence on holy ground. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, today that you would touch every heart under the sound of my voice. God, I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to let your healing power be manifest in this place tonight. I bind every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. I bind you now in the name and the authority of that name. I loose you from your assignment concerning the people of God right now. Father, I release the spirit of faith in this place. <clears throat> I bind up that spirit of fear, doubt, and unbelief, and I command you go. Go in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Sing with me, hallelujah. 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 Sing it to the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Father. God, we do honor you. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome in this place to move among us, Lord. There's no force in this earth can stop you from moving in this place. You are God. And besides you, there's no other. There's no principality, no power can stop you, Lord, from moving in this place today. There's no demon powerful enough to stop the work that you want to do in this place today. Now, Father, we apply the blood of Christ to every heart and every soul. I plead the blood right now of Jesus Christ over every heart, over every soul right now in the name of Jesus. Shake it, my God. I release right now every spirit or infirmity from its assignment. I loose every spirit of sickness and disease from its assignment now in Jesus' name. I speak to the bloodline. I speak to the bloodline of man and of woman. Every germ the virus that have entered the bloodline 
In the name of Jesus, I curse you. And I loose you from your assignment right now. Father, I'm asking your Father for a spiritual blood transfusion from the blood of Jesus Christ that flowed on Calvary, driving out every demonic spirit, every canker worm, every pommel worm, every locust that have invaded the property of your children. I thank you now, Lord. I come against cancer. I curse cancer. I curse arthritis. Go in Jesus' name. Rheumatoid arthritis, I command you to go in Jesus' name. And Father, I give you glory. I give you praise, Father. I give you glory, Lord. I give you praise for what you're going to do in this service tonight. In Jesus' name, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, tonight, there's miracles in the atmosphere tonight. Shh. There's miracles in the atmosphere tonight. Release your faith right now. Reach up toward heaven and take a hold to your miracle and bring it into the realm of now. Bring it into the realm of now. Now is your faith released for it. Now is the time you need your miracle. Bring your miracle into the now. Yes, yes. Don't look for it tomorrow when you can have it now. Yes. Tomorrow is another day. Yes. Today is the day that God is moving on your behalf. Tomorrow may be too late for you. But today you are here to receive what thus said the Lord. For I have borne your sicknesses. I have carried your diseases. I have borne the curse in my own body on the tree. Therefore, you are free from the curse of sicknesses and disease. For I, the Lord, have borne it for you. So don't hold on to it talking about this is mine. It is not yours. Give it back to whom it belongs to. It belongs to your enemy, the devil. Release it back into his hands. Release it by faith. Because God is the author of life. He's the author of life. He's the giver of life. So why take a hold to death before your time? Let go of it. Cleave to life and live. Oh, glory to God. Mm. My God. Hallelujah. Your healing is in the house tonight. Your deliverance is in the house tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Turn with me to uh, Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. You that are listening by the internet and viewing us by the internet. In your homes or wherever you are, today is the day that you will experience the power of God like you never have. I encourage you right now to make room for the Lord to enter in. Clear out all doubt and all unbelief and just repent. Make up your mind, today I'm going to believe the gospel and I'm going to receive my miracle. Amen. Because that spirit of doubt and unbelief is your enemy. He's not your friend. He will stop you from receiving what God has for you. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. 
and let faith come in. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the title deed of the promise that God has given you. But you have to release your faith in order to obtain it. Amen. In Jeremiah chapter 30, I want you to look with me. In verse number 17. Hallelujah. I tell you, before we go to verse number 17, let's start with verse number 12. Let's start with verse number 12 first. I hear somebody talking about rebellious earlier. See, there's a lot of people rebelling against God. Let's look right here at verse number 12. It says, For thus said the Lord, Hallelujah. Thy bruises is incredible, and thy wounds are grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicine. See, without God, you don't have no healing medicine. That's why it's so important that we stay connected to the Father. Because it's in Him that life flows. Mm. Amen. Look at verse number 17 now. For I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal thee of thy, what? Of thy wounds. I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast. Saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Thus said the Lord, behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob. Of Jacob's tent, and have mercy on his in dwelling place, his dwelling place. See, God's mercy is renewed every day. His mercy is new every day. God is wanting to do something so profound in your life. He wants to bring you to a place where you know without a shadow of a doubt that his hand. Has touched your life. It's not by might. It's not by power. But by my spirit said the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. God want to heal some deep wounds tonight. God want to set the captives free. When Christ received. When, when we received Christ in our hearts. Our spirit became instant. It became whole. It became at peace. But the enemy would have us to think that nothing has taken place to keep us in bondage. But when we receive Christ in our heart, we receive a new DNA. Mm. Who glory to God. And in this DNA that we receive when we accept Christ in our heart, there's no sickness involved. There's no diseases that can contaminate it. There's nothing that can hold you in bondage because the curse was done away with on the cross. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. And so God want to heal the whole. He want to, he want to go deep into, your, into, your, into the, the heart of the, 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 the center core of man's being because the enemy afflicted him and he made and if he afflicted you and made you weak and vulnerable and God is saying today I want to restore I want to bind up and I want to heal your wounds I want to heal your wounds I want to heal your wounds I want to restore I want to bring you back to a place of restoration I want to heal you I want to set you free hallelujah Let's look at James, uh, 3 John. 3 John chapter 1. 
Third John 1. Third John 1. That's in the New Testament. Third John 1. Hallelujah. Are you there? In third John 1, you got first John, you got second John, you got third John. Third John 1 said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. God wants you to begin to enjoy life without sickness and disease holding you down or causing you to, to walk in pain and suffering. God wants to bring you to a place of inner peace, inner healing. Everything that the enemy has meant for evil, God is going to turn it around for his good. That you would have a testimony and share with what God has done for you. Hallelujah. God is calling us to a place in him. Let's go to James since we are over here so close. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Verse number 15 and 16. Hello, let's start verse number 14. The Bible says, If any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of, Je in the, name of the Lord. Verse 15 and 16 are the ones that I'm really looking at right now. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Notice what he said. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have, notice what he said, if he have committed any, if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. They shall be forgiven him. Verse 16, confess your faults one to another. See, if you are so caught up in what you're doing that you cannot confess your fault, then you are saying, God, I don't believe your word is true. I can just, I, I'm going to live my life the way I want to live it. I'm not going to depend on you. I'm not going to trust you. I'm going to do what I want to do. And the Lord going to say, well, yeah, go ahead on. You're going you're gonna to find yourself coming back to me very soon. <laughs> yeah, go ahead on. Go ahead on. Do what you want to do. Live your life. Amen. But you're going to find yourself coming back to me because you're not, you're not a match for that enemy that's going to begin to ride your back. Hallelujah. Verse 16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one for another that ye may be, notice what that word, healed. That ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Hallelujah. God is going to do something in your life. God wants to bring you to an expected end. But the enemy is, is trying to deceive you. And you don't understand that it was the enemy. And therefore you yielded to this enemy. And you went headlong into his scheme, into his trap, into his, into his plan for your life. See, there's two people that have a plan for your life. There's God, the old mighty creator, has a plan for your life. And then there's a devil, that the one that comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, has a plan for your life. His plan is to kill you. That's his sole purpose. To kill you. To destroy you. To bring you to naught. To, to cause you to... I'm telling you, whenever you, begin to, whenever you begin to press forward, whenever you begin to feel the God moving in your life, there's always that enemy going to come up and say, well, you know that is not going to work. Then all of a sudden you go talk to your friends about what, what God has done. Then they're going to say, well, you know, what happened to you? You become a holy road? I, that wasn't, who, who, what happened to you? Then all of a sudden they put up, they 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 put they make you they make you feel guilty because you are sharing the life with them. 
that you're sharing life with them, and because they're so full of darkness, they make you feel guilty by cussing you out, not, and then, then they exercise you. Don't want to be a part of you. Don't want to be around you. And then because when you don't want to be alone, so instead of you pressing on into the things of God, you're going to put down your guards. And you're going to walk right back into that trap what God just set you free from. And God, oh. And all the wounds that God has healed you from, all of a sudden, that enemy is going to start pulling scabs. <laughs> Start pulling scabs. All of a sudden, you're going to begin to feel all that pain once again. Because you put yourself in a position to be wounded again. God wants you healed. God wants you to be whole. Turn with me to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. In John chapter 5, a very powerful lesson here. Start with verse 2. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And I've been to this place. I've seen this place that we're reading about right here. I've seen it with my own eyes. It's a colony with five porches and has a pool there. And I stood there right over that pool. And the presence of God was so real like I've never experienced it. Like I feel right now, but it was more intense because I was standing on holy ground. I was in the holy land standing on holy ground and my God, this was so real. Now, I'm, I'm sharing this with you because I know that God is going to stir somebody's water tonight. God is about to stir somebody's water. And it says right here in verse number, verse number, verse number uh, three. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halted, and withered, waiting for the moving of the water. And an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then after the water, after the, the, the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Now, when God, when, when, when the Lord came to this pool, there was a man there that had been trying to, to, re, trying to get healed for a long time. He was, he's been hurt, he's been diseased, he's been, he been paralyzed for 38 years, the Bible said. And Jesus came to this pool, and he was not drawn to all these, these many people that was there. He went to this one man that was there for, for such a long time. Now notice here, notice what it says right here in verse number, uh, let's just read on down. Verse, let's start at verse number, verse number 5. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 38 years, and when Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been, now been that been he had now he had been now a long time in this case. He said unto him, "Would thou be made whole? Would thou be made whole?" The impotent man answered him, "Sir, I have no man when the when the when the water is troubled to put me in to the wall into the pool. But while I am coming." Another stepped down before me, and Jesus said unto him, Rise. Arise. God, God, finna, God finna lift someone up right now. God is getting ready to lift someone up right now out of their, their troubled situation. Out of their, that, that, that thing that have held them bound and, and kept them in bondage for so many years. God is finna lift you up right now. But are you are you willing to rise up when he picked when he said when he said arise? Are you willing to rise up when he said arise? Are you going to say, well, I don't know if I want to do that right now because I, I you know I got so much things I got to think about before I do that. You know, I'm you know I, I I'm not I, I don't know about that healing stuff. <laughs> but you know you always got that kind. 
but there's always those that believe too. And then when they once they are healed and they see that that, that miracle step fast, then they, they begin to wonder, what happened to you? Well, I believe the gospel. I, I believe the gospel. What do you mean you believe the gospel? I heard the word of God preached just like I heard when I got when I got born again. I heard God preach on salvation. I heard the word preach on salvation, and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I was born again. But now I heard someone preach on God's divine healing power. And I believed it too. And guess what? I got healed. God healed me. The pain that I had in my body is no longer there. The disease that was in my bloodstream is no longer there. That age to gone. That, 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 what? Oh, ho, ho, shoko, po, that hepatitis the gone. It's no longer in my body. Why? Because the Lord has touched me. I have a, a, a blood transfusion from heaven. Glory to God. <laughs> I have a, a heavenly blood transfusion. Hallelujah. That and, 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 and that and that and that life and the life of that blood that I received from that blood transfusion from heaven, it drove out that cancer. It drove out that diabetes. It drove out that heart problem. It drove out that 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 that, that that oh glory that shot cut on about that rheumatoid arthritis. Nah. Mm. It just drove it out. Why? How do you what do you mean it drove it out? Well, when the blood of Jesus began to come upon this thing, it had to go. It couldn't stay. When the light began to shine on it, it had to go because darkness can't stay when light appears. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. <laughs> Glory to your name. So he had, so this man, he was there for 38 years in this position. And all of a sudden, he was, he was just lying there in darkness. All, I mean, darkness all around him. And all of a sudden, the light came and shined upon him. The light came and shined upon him. And he, and he said, would thou be, he said, well, would thou be made whole? Well, well master, every, uh, every time I try to get down it, I have no man to help me when the water is, tr when, the, when the pool is troubled. Amen. I have no one to help me. And another just stepped down in there before me. And no one wants to help me. And Jesus just looked at him and said, Arise. 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 That's, the, that's just like Jesus when, when Peter was out on that ship. When, when Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come to you on the water. Come. He didn't hesitate. He said, come. And like this man sitting in there, he began, arise. See, it don't take a whole lot to be healed. All it takes just a little faith. If you have just a little faith, just a little faith, you can receive what God intends for you to receive. Just a little faith. If you have just a little faith, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed. He didn't say he was going to say it for you. He said you were going to say it. He, you are the one got to open up your mouth and begin to speak the word of God. You can say to that mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not, if you don't doubt it in your heart, if you don't doubt what, what you're saying, if you don't doubt what you're saying, but believe what you're saying, it shall come to pass. Because the Bible says here, what they, whatsoever man pray when he, whatsoever man say when he believe, it shall be done for him. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord just put another scripture. Right, let's go to one more scripture. Let's go to Romans chapter four. Romans chapter four. Hallelujah. And I notice what it says right here in Romans chapter. Look at look at uh, chapter three first and verse three. Chapter three and verse three. Romans chapter three and verse three says, "For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid! Yea, let God what be true." <laughs> See, it's not, your unbelief is not going to affect the, the word of God. See, there's nothing in this world that can stop God from moving when God decides he want to move. No devil, no demon, no principality, no power can stop this mighty God when he decides that he want to move. Ah, glory to God. Amen. So he said in verse number 3, chapter 3, verse 3, he said, For what is, for what if, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? 
God forbid, let God be true, and every man allow, as it is written, they, that thou mayest be justified in, in thy saying, and mighty, and mighty is be overcome when thou art judged. Amen. Now let's look at chapter 4. Chapter 4, let's look down at verse number 16. Chapter 4, verse 16. There is, there, therefore it is of faith that it might be grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of men and nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickens the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who Now notice what it says in verse 18, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of men and nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. Now we're talking about we're talking about you receiving God's word. You receiving your healing. You receiving your deliverance. Now every word that I speak to you, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit, and they are life. These words that I'm speaking is going into your heart. Those of you that have opened up your heart is going in in seed form. You, I, I'm, I'm just like I'm just like a farmer right now. I'm planting seed into the ground of God. You are God's ground, and I'm the farmer. <laughs> Y'all understand that, right? I'm the farmer, and I'm planting the seed of God into your heart. That as you begin to adhere to the Word of God, you don't allow doubt to come in and destroy the seed that's been planted in your heart. It will produce some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. It's going to spring forth in life. Hallelujah. Notice what it says now here in verse number, verse number 7, verse number 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of men and nations to the, to According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And I like verse nineteen because it because see if you if you if you if you are if you're not if your spirit is not strong, then it's going to be hard for you to to get what you want from God because see God wants you to have strong faith, and if your spirit is weak, if your spirit if your spirit has been has been beat up and been dominated. So much that there's no faith in it at all. That now you got to get built back up, and you got to come to the place where you could just like a little child that you can just simply believe the word of God. You got to put away all doubt, all fear, and you got to come to God just like a little child. Amen. Because see, that little child don't know don't know nothing about strong faith. That little child don't know nothing about weak faith. That little child don't know nothing about faith at all. That little child only know that if Daddy said it, I believe it's going to happen. If I set my daughter up here and I said, jump, she's not going to say, well, I don't know if you're going to catch me. No, she's not going to say that because she don't know that. What's she going to do? She's going to jump. And that's the way you got to be right now with God. You've been hurt. You've been wounded. You've been bruised. Now the enemy has, has lost a stronghold. When you stepped your foot in this door today, you, the enemy, he tried his best to keep you from coming. How many had second thoughts by coming? Huh? <laughs> Yeah, I know. You might want to tell the truth and shame the devil. Amen. But, but listen, every time, every time God's getting ready to do something in your life, the enemy is going to come up because he, he knows that if you get to the word of God, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that you can walk away free, delivered, totally. <clears throat> and so he does, he does everything he can to keep you from getting to God. Now, now notice, a baby don't have strong faith, a baby don't have weak faith, a baby don't even know what faith is all about. All that baby have is what mom and daddy says. When daddy said jump, the baby just jump. When daddy said go, the baby just go. When daddy said come, the baby just come. Unless she's or he acting in rebellion, 
then that's a different story. Amen? Because you have to make your own choices in life. Verse 19 again. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. And when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20 is so important. He staggered not at the promises of God through what? Unbelief. Through unbelief. You got to get rid of the unbelief because God moved totally, solely on faith. Unbelief is not your friend. He is your enemy. He's out to stop you from getting to that place where you can be free from all the powers of darkness. God is want you free. God wants you to be God wants to set you free right now. He wants to set you free right now. He wants to heal, he wants to heal your mind right now. He wants to heal your heart right now. He wants to heal your soul right now. He wants to heal your body right now. Ain't nothing that can stop God from moving in your life but you. Verse number 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. But was strong in faith. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. It's time you stop struggling. It's time to stop struggling, trying to believe God. It's time to just become to just come to Him like a little child. Put away all your differences. Act like you don't know nothing about the Word of God. Because see, sometimes when people go to, when people go to learn a few scriptures, they think they know more than what they. They think they know a whole lot. When all, they just learn enough to, to be dangerous. Right. <laughs> they just learn enough to hurt themselves. Right. Because now they don't feel like that they, they, they have to be, uh, be in, in the house of God no more. Because they learn a few scriptures. Yeah. Oh, I, don't, I, I heard that before. I don't have to. No, no. I, 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 I can sit at home and I don't have to go to church. I can, I can have church in my home just being by myself. Right. <laughs> Who are you going to entertain? The devils? They the one kept you at home. They the one that that's the only thing you that that's the only thing that entertain you. That's right. <sighs> Hallelujah. So it's time. It's God don't want us to be, God don't want us to struggle in our faith any longer. God wants us to release our faith so we can receive our healing, our deliverance, or whatever it is that we believe in God for. God said, release your faith now. I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you right now. I dare you to believe what I'm telling you. I dare you to simply believe it in your heart. Because if you come to the point to believe what I'm sharing with you in your heart, it will change your life forever. I dare you to believe the gospel. Are you afraid of change? Are you ready for a change? Then let go of everything that have kept you away from God. Just let it go. It's not going to profit you nothing to hold on to them because they're going to, they're going to, if it's people, then they're going to make sure that you don't come back close around God people anyway. So you got to make a decision. Do I want to go back to my old lifestyle or do I want to fall after God? You know, you know but, but you know, I got to make some money in some kind of way so I might want to go and give me, a, give me a little something going on on the outside out here. No, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. See, it's a trick of the enemy. When you became a born again child of God, you became an heir of the kingdom of God. You became a son of God. You have become God's property. Now God is ready to move on your behalf. What is it that you need to help you to 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 to, to help you to stay away from the from the things of the past? What is it that you need to help you to, to know that God really loves you and that He really cares for you? What is it that you need from God? If it's not healing, what is it? Is it a job? What is it? Is it finances? What is it? Don't forget. You're not, I'm not talking about no little bitty God. 
I'm talking about a big God. I'm talking about the God of the universe, glory to God. I'm talking about the mighty creator of all things. I'm not talking about someone that's here that way in a box somewhere. I'm talking about God. The one that wants to set you free. The one that wants to establish you. The one that wants to give you a hope and an expected end. The one that wants to set you in a place where the world will look upon you and say, Is that Junior over there? Well, I, last time I saw him, he was out there selling them doobies. <laughs> oh, is that Mary over there? The last time I saw her, she was out there turning tricks. But look at her now. Look how, look at her cheek. What is, the, what is that glow on your face? Is that a new lotion or something? You understand what I'm saying? When the, she get my car out. When God began to move in your life, you see the atmosphere is changing right now? The atmosphere in this place is changing right now. The miracle working power of God right now is being released in this place right now. If you would just simply believe the gospel that Jesus Christ bore your sickness and your diseases on the cross, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Just believe. The same way you was born again, you only all thing you did was believe in your heart. And you said, God, what I want to be saved. I'm tired of this lifestyle. I'm tired of my heart hurting like this. Well, when you said, Lord, come into my heart, guess what happened? He did. What? Well, the same thing can happen with your healing. God, I'm tired of hurting. And I don't have money to go to the hospital. And even if I did go to the hospital, how, I don't know if I could ever pay them. They may not even see me, Lord. <laughs> I was like that. I didn't have money to go to no hospital. I didn't have no insurance. Let's turn to Mark chapter 6, 16. Mark chapter 16. God don't want you struggling in your faith. The man at the pool of Bethesda, he started trying to explain why he didn't get his healing. Every time I tried to get down in the water, another one stepped down in before me. And Lord, I just don't know what to do. I'm so, I'm so weak. And Jesus looked at him and said, rise up and take up thy bed and walk. Whew. Mark chapter 16, look at verse number 17. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. See, what signs? Your healing, your miracles, everything that you need from God. They're ready right now to come in your path and begin to follow you instead of you running behind them. They're ready to begin to follow you. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. In, that believe in my name. They shall do what? They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up servants. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Notice what he said? They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Tonight, I'm going to lay hands on you if you're sick. And I'm going to... I'm going, to, I'm going to operate in James chapter 5, verse number 14 and 15. I'm going to anoint you with all tonight. You that are listening by the internet, you that are viewing by the internet, get your anointing all out right now. <sighs> My God, I feel a power of God in this place. Amen. Glory to his name. Get your anointing all out right now. And as I begin to anoint these people, you take that oil and you anoint your head with that oil also. Don't do it until we do it here because that's where the anointing is going to be released. If you have cancer, you have diabetes, you have heart problem, whatever your, whatever your sickness is right now, just release your faith with me right now. If, you have, if the enemy is messing with your head, your mind, your brain, whatever. If the enemy has messed you, what I don't care what your sickness is. This is the purpose that the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Sickness is not from God. Sickness is from the devil. Mm. 
and the blood of Jesus is going to be applied tonight and your healing shall come forth. Your healing shall come forth. Are you ready? So he said in verse number, verse number 16 again, verse number 17 again, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. And all I'm asking you to do right now is just simply believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. And the Lord said, in my name, not my name, not Larry Burgess, I'm not the one. Jesus is the one that you should put your faith in. I'm not the one. I am a vessel that he's going to flow through. But let me tell you something. He's in the house. <clears throat> he's in the house. He's in the house. And he's going to touch you tonight. Hallelujah. He want to heal you. And he want to set you free. He want to give you peace. And he want to set your heart free. Are you ready to receive what God has for you? The Bible says right here in verse number, verse number 18. It says, They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. I used to be so sick. I laid up in my bed. Out in that cotton field in Alabama. That did a little bit of block house out in the cotton field. On the edge of the house. On the edge of the road. And I'm laying up in my bed. And I'm balled up in knots crying like a baby. Didn't have no money. Didn't have no, 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 no insurance. No nothing. And I'm crying like a baby. Oh God is there something you can do. I didn't really know how to pray. God, is there something you know that he can do anything? Now, I know that now. I didn't know that then. Amen. But as I'm sitting there praying, God said, get your Bible and read. And he showed me this scripture that I just shared with you. And he said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And I said, Lord, I'm a, I'm a believer. I, I believe that you I believe that you are the son of God. I believe you died for my sin. I, I start telling them what I believe. Amen. I start telling what I believe then. Amen. I believe that you're the son of God. I believe you died for my sin. God, but I want to be healed. I'm hurting. I'm, I'm crying. I'm, I'm, I'm so much in pain. I need healing right now. And I don't know what to do. And, 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 the, Lord, and, and the Lord just showed me. He said, read it again. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, Lord, you, who did, the, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall take up, they, they, shall, they shall cast out devil, they shall speak a new tongue, they shall take up serpent. If they drink any of their thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, Lord, who are you talking about? I'm talking to them that believe. I'm not talking to the one that don't believe. I'm talking to the one that believe. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Jesus was not talking to the one that did not believe. He was only talking to the one that believe. That's why I said it's time to stop struggling in your faith. It's time to just simply believe the gospel. I dare you to believe the gospel today. It will literally change your life. <clears throat> he said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, who's going to lay hands on the sick? The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher? No, he didn't say the apostle, apostle, apostle prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, we're going to lay hands on the, on the sick and they're going to recover. That ain't what he said. Read that again. Amen. He said them that believe. And that's what he meant. Them that believe. Hallelujah. Father, I ask right now, whew, my God, I ask right now, Father, that your miracle working power will be manifest now for your people to simply believe it, receive it, and they will walk out a brand new person. God, it's not by might. And it's not by power, 
but it's by your spirit. And God, we yield to your spirit right now. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Mold me, feel me, use me. Spirit of the living God, Fall fresh on me. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Father, right now, I release your anointing to drive out sicknesses, and diseases. Lord Jesus, have your way right now. I have prepared the hearts of your people through the word that you've given me. I have spoken that and have declared it unto your people. Lord Jesus, touch your people right now. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you. You feel the power of God resting upon you right now? Receive your healing right now. You that are listening by the internet right now, you that are viewing, receive your healing right now. The power of God is being released right now. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. I speak to the blood. I said be healed in Jesus' name. I speak to the pancreas, be healed in Jesus' name. I speak to that colon, I command cancer, go in Jesus' name. I speak to that, to, that, to, that, to that lung, be healed now in Jesus' name. Father, I speak to that heart problem, and I command it to, be, to function properly in Jesus' name. Diabetes, go. Pancreas, be healed in Jesus' name. Lycoma, be healed now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that you're restoring eyesight right now. God, you're restoring eyesight right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak to those cataracts. I speak to that cataracts. I speak to those floaters that, there's, that is seen in your eyes while you're looking. I command you to leave now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I speak to the eye muscles. I command you to line up properly in Jesus' name. Go to mama. In Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you. I thank you. Oh, shakamako shiki. The Lord is not only concerned about healing your body. I just heard the Lord say, I'm going to heal finances too. I'm going to heal finances too. 
in the name of Jesus. I come against that spirit of poverty that has come against the finances of your people. Father, heal their finances now in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Now I release signs, wonders, and miracles in the atmosphere. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus, you bore our sicknesses, and you carried our diseases, and by your stripes, we are healed. We are healed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Receive your healing right now. If you're here today and you have sickness in your body, you want me to anoint you with oil right now, I want you to come. Those of you that are listening, if you're by the internet, I want you to get your oil right now. In Jesus' name. Come on. Father, I release your healing power. In the name of Jesus. Everything that the enemy has meant for evil, God, today, you're turning around for your glory. The healing power is being released now. In Jesus' name. Begin to anoint yourself. You that are listening, viewed by the internet, begin to anoint yourself right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I release your anointing right now, your healing power right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for it right now. Receive, receive right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Go, baby. Go to mommy. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release that anointing now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Father, let her be healed now. Now, there it is. Receive it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Yep, yep.